hell. <laughs> Scared me. Yeah, but that's the sound of this devil. Right, welcome to a video on the best hypercars of the Geneva Motor Show. Now then, we're kicking this video off at the Bugatti, well not at the Bugatti stand, actually just outside of the Bugatti stand because uh, we can't get in. So, I mean, if you guys feel like subscribing so that we can bring you content from there, feel free. I'm not against the idea. But anyways, we, <laughs> we stood literally on the side of the stand. We are here because if we're gonna start a video about hypercars, why not start at the very top with the brand new La Voiture Noire. Which means the black car, which, you know, fairly self-explanatory, which one that is, it is that car right there. But before we get to that, if we just spin this way, you're going to see a limited edition Bugatti Chiron um, with lots of French touches on that. That is a car that they have released also very recently, full carbon finish, limited numbers, a Devo as well. Again, you guys already know about that car. It was launched at Pebble Beach, and I'm sure you have seen a lot of videos on that, so I'm not gonna bore you about that, but as a stand as a whole, these three cars are an awesome lineup, and the person who bought that, singular person, because there's only one in the world, it's a one-off, probably has both of those as well. I imagine that's what you need to qualify. But the La Voiture Noire is a 16.4 million euro, 16.42 million euro one-off car. And it's basically, the story is that back in the day, Bugatti made the Atlantic, which is one of the most valuable cars in the world right now. I believe one got lost in transit to Belgium, I think it was, completely lost. No one, no one knows where it is. One burnt down and there are two left. And if they were to go up for sale, they would be like borderline double of what a 250 GTO is in terms of value. So you know how crazy those are. So one is lost. And to commemorate that, Bugatti made this one-off behind to replace the missing Atlantic. That is why this car is born. It's got a slightly longer wheelbase, but apart from that, it's very Chiron-esque. And we're gonna kick off the hypercar video with that. Let's go to the next one now. Bye. One car I didn't really expect to be so blown away by is this, the Pininfarina Batista. Pininfarina legendary design house have decided to make their own hypercar. Now, they're only gonna make about 150 of these fully electric cars with 1,900 horsepower. So these are massive numbers, 2,300 newton meters of torque. Absolute animal, and they say not to 60 because of the sort of electric engine, it's going to be under two seconds. Absolutely insane, and 186 in under 12. So this thing is a beast. I wasn't prepared to sort of see it here and be so excited by it, man, what a car. Absolutely gorgeous is that Pininfarina do design better than sort of anyone else they've designed. Countless Ferraris, so many absolutely legendary cars, and for them now to embark on this journey, only making 150, I think 75 are already sold, is fantastic, so, you know, Good for them, and I hope they do really well. I think it's a great looking car with amazing power figures, and I can't wait to hopefully see some on the road and see some people driving them. Complete contrast from the Pininfarina Batista is this, the Zenvo behind me. You can see it written on the back. Zenvo T-S-R-S. It's the complete opposite from the Pininfarina because the Pininfarina is completely electric, obviously, new technology. This is old brute force. It's the combustion engine versus the electric engine. This thing is a twin supercharged V8. It has 1,177 brake horsepower, over 1,000 newton meters of torque, and will do 0 to 60 in just over two seconds. So it's very, very rapid loads of aerodynamics on this car which means that it goes over 200 miles an hour 202 miles an hour but considering the amount of power it has that's not a huge amount it's just because of that huge rear wing you can see and all the aerodynamics behind it the rear wing is actually relevant because it will adjust to your steering angle and when you brake so it's the very very i mean there's a lot of active rear wings but this is like next it's very active this is like a proper like sports ready rear wing it's ready to go so this is a cool hypercar i think it looks awesome in this color never really seen them on the road but it's just cool to compare how pin and Farina have gone about it and how zenbo are doing it now
Right, a different approach to the hypercar lookout is what McLaren have done here with what's behind me, the speed tail. Now, instead of going just for outright track performance speed, they've decided to go for a bit of a long cruiser, really rare car with just a bunch of power as well. This is a hybrid, I guess we'd call it, one of these new generation of hybrid hypercars. So it has the usual twin turbocharged V8 that you see in like the 720S, it's a derived version of that but it's coupled with an electric engine, which gives it a total of over 1,100 brake horsepower. Now this is more inspired by the McLaren F1 than any of the past McLarens we have seen. Now the legendary McLaren F1 is a number that was made and there were about 106 units, therefore there will be about 106 units of this. Speed tail being made behind me, all are extremely expensive. We're not really going to talk money in these because once you're at hypercar level, I think it's pretty irrelevant. Most of the people who buy one of these has most of the other cars we're putting in this video. Anyways, they don't really care about the price. But I find this interesting because it's such a different way of doing the hypercar sort of game. They haven't gone for track performance. They've gone more historical, kind of like what we saw with the Bugatti. They've taken their history and they've applied that to a platform kind of that they already had but um, you know of course it's completely different to any other McLaren that's currently on the road speed tail also comes into play because of how aerodynamic it is it has a massive top speed now we haven't had anything confirmed yet but this will be one of the quickest cars on the road for sure and also you can tell it's got a very long tail as well so that's where the name comes from this is one of my favorite hypercars that we're seeing at the motor show today and the one that I find to be the most classy I would get in a lot of trouble from you guys, A, but also from my girlfriend because this is her favorite car. If I didn't include this in this video, and it's well deserved. This is probably the hypercar I am most excited about currently right now. I just think it's the coolest concept ever. This is the Aston Martin Valkyrie. You guys know it well. It is a project that Aston Martin did with Red Bull using the legendary sort of designer Adrian Newey. They put it all together as a naturally aspirated V12 hybrid system producing over 1100 horsepower and is probably the most beautiful hypercar I think ever built. This is the final sort of production version of the car, production that is, very very limited numbers um, and I mean 11,000 RPM, nationally aspirated V12, it is just going to be an absolute animal on the road and cool to see that it's come to life, it's taken a while this, we've seen sort of different versions of it and now we've got the final one, people are specking them and deliveries will start soon, awesome. I remember the time where one million pounds would buy you any hypercar. A Bugatti was just under a million pounds and that seemed insane, right? Whereas now, for the price of this behind me, you could buy all three of the hypercar trio. That's three million pounds. And that seems completely normal in this hypercar video, which is mind bending, but it's worth that money because what Koenigsegg have done here with their brand new Koenigsegg Jerko, Yerko, Yerko, Yako. Yerko? pronounce it how you will, is raise the bar one more time. It's 1,600 brake horsepower from a naturally aspirated engine. There is no electric engine, no hybrid engine. There is nothing to assist it. And that is very convenient timing right behind me. There is the engine that you see. And it is an absolute beast. Also kind of cool that it just comes up on hydraulics. But this car also has seven clutches. Seven. Which is, so it can go from like seventh gear, sixth gear, down to third in one shift. Rather than going sixth, fifth, fourth, third, it'll just bang, it'll go straight down there. They say that without the wing, it would be able to do 300 miles an hour as well. I'm sure they'll test it, they just need to find an owner crazy enough to take the wing off and try it out, which I'm sure they will. But that's the Koenigsegg, Joko, Yoko, Yiko, Yako, Yiko, yeah, bye. <laughs>